The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of its host, guests, and callers that are not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society with your host, Anita Finley. Your comments and questions are welcome during today's broadcast. Call us toll free at 888-721-0074. That's 888-721-0074. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Well, good morning again. We've had a good show so far. We had a call in from Staten Island, of course, uh, with our celebrity writer, who is Darwin Porter. And then uh, now, actually, from Orlando, we are going to have Dr. Ridgway, Dr. Robert Ridgway, who is the veterinarian that writes great articles in Boomer Times. Good morning, Dr. Ridgway. Morning. How are you today? Oh, we're fine. We're having a little bit of lightning and thunder, but we'll see if we can get through this. So, you know, talking about that, and I don't know what you wanted to talk about, but I was going to ask you uh, how dogs and cats are affected by fireworks, lightning, uh, thunder. They are affected, aren't they? Well, uh, particularly dogs uh, and cats, when they, they hear those sounds that they're not used to, they get frightened. And, and uh, sometimes uh, it's, they respond very, very negatively to that. And... and uh, Lightning. There's a. I don't know how effective it is. Um, at pet stores, you can buy what they call a thunder shirt, and it's. I uh, assume it's like somebody picking the pet up and uh, hugging it, and it gives it the sensation of of somebody hugging it. it it's a tight. Uh, looks somewhat like those uh, uh, bulletproof vests, actually. Once you get it onto the pet, but. People say they're effective. It's interesting. When I first got my dog years ago, I didn't realize that that was going to be a problem, so I went over to visit a little party, and they were doing fireworks. Well, my dog went so ballistic. Uh, so here I'm bringing the dog to the fireworks. That was dumb, but I, so I don't do that. But a lot of the animals go under beds. They hide in closets. That's correct. Absolutely. Yep. Was well, it very uh, hard on their ears? Is that why it's it's? Well, I think it's. Um, they don't know where it's come from, what what it is, and they're they're not familiar with it. You know, one of the things about having the pets that are in a house all the time, uh, people seem to think that they're never going to get out. And I used to believe that, but I've seen that happen. So many pets get out of the house and wander around. They have no idea where they're at. Uh, they have no sense of direction. They do not have a built-in GPS, and they get very lost, and bad, bad things happen to them. Yeah, so, that, yeah you uh, said that. That goes along with what you're discussing in that they're, they're not experienced with these phenomenon that you're discussing, and that's the way they respond because they really don't know what to do, and so they're doing what they think they can do to safety so is it so maybe if at least if they're small you could just hold them in your lap if you are home and they'll feel you know that they're protected I think that's true sometimes uh, they like to be hugged you know it, I don't know what it is it, it gives them a sense of security when you, when you do that yeah I was thinking about all the animals uh, of course that are rescued and they're in these buildings and they're just alone and then they hear this Terrible racket of thunder and lightning it must be terrible for them. I mean, not even to. I need uh, to discuss this. <laughs> well, some of them will respond actually, and you know when you have 500 or 600 animals, they're just going to have to live with it. That's all. Well, I almost got a dog the other day. I was going to tell you about this. I uh, a friend of mine was in, uh, walking her street, and there was a woman with four dogs and they start talking and the woman is a rescue woman she gets the dogs she gets them from all over the kill centers and then she brings them down here in miami where i guess there's they don't have at least the one that she deals with doesn't have a kill center they just take care of the dogs and they put them out for adoption and nothing nothing would do but she had a little white dog that just looked like our Bichon. and so they called me right away to, you know, come go over, and I spoke to the woman, and we started discussing, which I think is important, that I have uh, triplet grandchildren who are eight, and what kind of a dog was it, and 
I can't even tell you the name. It looks like a Bichon, but it's a very, it's a unique name. It's a rare breed of this little white dog. And she said, well, it's very much uh, like a little hunter, even though it looks like it's, it's, that is not a lap dog. It doesn't want to sit in your lap. And so we both decided that wasn't going to work for me, but that she says she has me on her mind now and she gets hundreds of dogs and unfortunately, and she will definitely find me what I'm looking for. How do you like that? That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> Just hang in there. It'll come by. Well, and then that woman, isn't she terrific to be able to do that? She takes them in herself, and then they, they find other families that want them. She, I think that's just lovely. I knew you'd like, like this lady. Uh-huh. Well, you know, there's several people that do that. In fact, uh, many of those uh, rescues will uh, take pets from uh, uh, shelters and get them adopted. So, you know, they do a lot of real fine things for animals. Sometimes they're not so fine, but most of the time they do a real good job. Well, she told me the application process is 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 very strong because she, um, my friend knew me and she was talking to her, but she had someone that was thinking about the dog, but no, they sit down, they... It's like adopting a baby almost. They want to make sure that that dog is not going to be out on the street again. Yeah, I know. And and, and um, sometimes uh, people are refused because uh, they don't think that they're going to get a, a good home. Hmm. And, uh, you know, that's that's good stuff. And it's uh, very important uh, because uh, animals already had traumatic experiences. Right. You need to cause them to have more post-traumatic stress syndromes. <laughs> no, that's true. What would a person, why would they not be good for, is it just that particular dog or for having a dog or a cat? What, what would be the uh, characteristics well, you know, of I, that? The, the grocery list is very long. People <laughs> ignore pets. They, they tie them out in the backyard and forget them. They don't feed them. They don't care for them. They never take them to a veterinarian. Uh, uh, you, you can't imagine the... Uh, the problems that can occur to somebody that thinks they're going to do something good for an animal, and then they treat it the way I just described. If it's not a good, not a good thing to happen to anything or anybody, uh, let alone, you know, I just I just see so many of the the worst scenarios come to a shelter. It just it, it's so sad. Anyway, hey, I, I had about. Three things I, I wanted to really kind of hit a little bit today. Okay. Yeah, please, go. I, I, was, I was talking with a, 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 some practicing veterinarians, and you know, uh, which seems kind of stupid to me, but a lot of people take their pet to the veterinarian and then lie about the, the condition that they're bringing it to the veterinarian for. And obviously the reason they're going there in the first place is for the benefit of the pet. And it, it seems un. Uh, reasonable to me that somebody would take their pet in and then lie to the veterinarian about the conditions, and they can. Uh, and and, <laughs> and it was one of the veterinarians telling me he says it's obvious what was really the problem, and here she's standing right in front of me and, and lying to me about what the problem is, and I can see the signs, so <laughs> I know she was lying. And so when they go to a veterinarian, they need to be very, very truthful up front. And I think one of the problems that cry, arises is that the people are embarrassed about the situation that has occurred because they think they're going to be blamed for the condition that the pet has. And what we're there for is to make the pet well and get over the condition that it has. So you need to tell the truth to the doctor. It's all you're doing by lying when you take a pet to a veterinarian is uh, putting a, a, a stop sign in the process of making that pet well. You understand where I'm coming from? Well, Dr. Richway, I'm going to uh, uh, jump on that and tell you that I find that humans do the same thing with their doctors. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. You know, I, 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 you know it, it's hard to believe that they do that because they're there to get well. And then they, uh, I, I get, this to me, it is completely, I can't understand it. Then maybe they're embarrassed. Is that what you think it is? I think it is, and it's uh, it's it's really a problem. Um, And then um, they're there to get the pet well, and I know that it happens in people too. I mean, 
everything that happens in veterinary medicine happens in the human side of the fence too. Uh, medicine is medicine. The only difference is that the pet or the animals or the the, the, the patient, I should say, has a little different anatomy. <laughs> I would yeah. say that's true. Okay, well, that's good good advice. So we'll remember that to be sure to tell the veterinarian the truth. You've gotten there. Let's get this uh, this get this show on the road. All right, what's your next thing? Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, insurance uh, for pets. I'm not saying which company is best or whatever, but here's what I have learned about insurance. Before you buy insurance. You should talk to the veterinarian that's taking care of your pet. And here is the reason why. Sometimes uh, the insurance companies pay for everything. And other insurance companies start saying, well, we won't pay for this, we weren't going to pay for that, but, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so the owner, even though they have the insurance, ends up paying uh, for a lot of things that were done to the pet. And I think most people would prefer that their insurance cover the whole ball of wax. And so the veterinarian where you're taking your pet has experienced these things with different insurance companies. And so before you buy insurance, talk with them, find out what they think is the best plan, and go with a plan that they're recommending. Now, I, I was doing this with one of the um, practicing veterinarians, and he's, he gave me many, many examples of why insurance is good about because uh, people come in, they can't afford things, and they but luckily they had insurance, and maybe the bill ran three, four, or five thousand dollars, and they happen to have insurance, so the insurance company paid for it. And this particular one gave me two insurance company names. I don't know if I should tell the, the names on the, on the radio. Yeah, or you not. can, you can, and I'll just stop you for one second with that because. I did have, when I had my dog, I did have insurance, and I think it was like $35 a month or something. But I'll tell you, towards the end of, of uh, her life, there were d- bills that were thousands of dollars, and they paid. It was, it's definitely something people should have. And yeah. I, what I did is I went where my vet was, and they usually have little uh, brochures there. And so if you take those, you know that they're going to take that. Yeah, yeah. So well, go ahead, please. Before, before you buy it, you should talk with the veterinarian that you, wherever you're taking your pet. I don't care, even if I give you a couple of names, you should still talk to the veterinarian there because they know the insurance companies that, that try and pull the wool over your eyes. In other words, don't pay the, the premiums. Uh, you, you're paying the premiums, and it, when it comes time for them to shell out, they don't. So talk to them and make sure that you're getting the plan that they, they're recommending. I have one here called True Devotion, hmm. and um, another one is called Pet Plan, Pet Insurance. And he said both of those were really good at paying 100%. Now, again, even though I said that, don't buy insurance for your pet until you talk to your veterinarian because he knows insurance companies that don't pay up. And you, what you want is one that's going to take care of your pet. Good advice. Yeah. Good advice. And thank you for bringing that up because it's funny. I have told my friends who have pets, and they, they say, ah, oh, we don't need insurance. And, and then all of a sudden there's some huge bills. One friend, I had begged her to get insurance, and she has two dogs. Well, it's going to be this much. So she wound up with a $2,500 bill because she really wanted to save her dog, which she did. And I mean that's ridiculous. Thirty five dollars a month. It's it's your dog for heaven's sakes, or your cat. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know it's different strokes for different folks. But um, at one time I, I wasn't. You know, in, it, uh, pet insurance is is kind of coming into its own. It's it's an evolving thing right now, and it's it's uh, progressed uh, quite a bit in the last. Well, I'm going to say twenty thirty years, and. Um, so if, if there are, anybody is going to buy pet insurance, what I, have, I feel like I've learned is that you need to talk to your veterinarian and make sure that you're getting the, the insurance that they're recommending, uh, and they'll normally recommend the one that, that pays the best. Right. You know, and, and if, if they don't, you say, hey, let's talk about which one pays and which one doesn't. 
you know? Right, right. Well, that's good advice, and thank you for bringing that up. I don't, um, I don't think we have you done an article on pet insurance. No. That no. might be a good thing to do because even though we have this on the radio, uh, I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, we let's see the one coming up now in the July issue is on. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you gave me two great ones. Uh, this is the one about, oh, putting your dog down and how, you know, you have to do the right thing. So that was a good one. And then you gave me another one that was going to go into August. I don't remember that one right now. Yeah, it was, um, uh, about, uh, the states, all, all states, uh, uh, make uh, cruelty a felony. Oh yeah, right, right. No, I, I and mean, we love your articles. I think people really have gotten so much from them and sometimes people are having really problems. I say, Well here here's his email or here's his phone number. If you call him I'm sure he'll tell you. I hope I'm not burdening you with that. No, no. I've had a few calls like that. That's fine. Yeah. Um, it's wonderful to have the access and of course your book sits in our office and uh, any of our friends who have problems I said, Just read the book. Just get the book and that's what I really need to tell people that of course, Dr. Ridgway did write a terrific book. It's um, well, he wrote one, and then I guess you updated it, and you. Um, it's called "Truth About Dog and Cat Treatments and Anomalies," and you can get that of, at, of course, by going to Amazon. But it has so many aspects of things that it's an aha book. Oh, that's what I should be doing. I have another question before you get on to one that you're going to do. If I get a small dog and I live in a condo now, people said, well, you could just use these pee pads. Do you think that's okay that a little dog has that, and, and then will they still go outside? Well, uh, obviously you're, you're training the pet to, to go inside. I don't know if you're going to use a pee pad. I think I might uh, get a, a, a cat litter box and put the pad in there, you know. Oh, I am, good. Uh, That's a good idea. I'm not real sure. I've, I've not really dealt with that issue personally, and so I'm probably not the best one to answer that okay. question. Well, there are a lot of people in my condo that use this, and so, and I'm not used to that because we always take the dog out, but there are days where we can't get home or something, and, of course, usually I have a dog sitter on those days, but, uh, you know, maybe there should be one just in case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always that, you know, that's the thing about you don't have that issue with cats uh, because they, they have a litter box and they normally always use a litter box. Right. But dogs, if you don't get home in time, they, they you know, they can only hold what, how, how much the bladder can extend, you know. And, and it's not so, fair. Yeah. And, and so I, I can see where there's, uh, because if you just, Say you happen to be at work and you you just cannot get away, you know. Right. It's gonna happen. Yeah. And uh, if you have that, you know, I mean, that's that's better than it being on your rug. That's for sure. And of course, I think it's very hard on the dog. I mean, I can't have cats because I'm allergic. So I'm going to talk about dogs because the dog is a good dog. It doesn't want to do that. It knows that you're not happy. It wants to do the right thing. And so, if you give that the opportunity, then everyone's happy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Well, you know, the other thing I was going to talk about is people, you know, they take their pets in for surgery. Yep. And uh, I have in the book the truth about dog and cat uh, uh, treatments and anomalies. There's 13 points that I suggest that they, maybe they just take the book with them when when they're leaving their pet and make sure uh, everything is going to be okay. Uh because uh, what I have found, uh, uh, when there's problems between the client, the veterinarian, it's because those 13 questions weren't answered when the pet was left with the veterinarian. And so to include the, the client, the pet owner, from having problems or surprises that they know those 13 points, and, and you know, 13 of them, and they're, they're kind of extensive, so, you, so it's impossible to to memorize them. Uh, and, and most uh, clinics do not have a checklist as extensive as I put it in the book. Um, and I don't know, I, I could go through those. Yeah, why don't you do that? That's a good idea. Okay. Well, the first one 
is to discuss any treatment plans and options for your pet so that you understand the charges and any discussion that you need to make before you even leave the pet for the surgery. That's number one. We're going to leave it for, you know, I'm, I'm bringing this in for a spay or whatever it is. Then the next thing is they need to make sure that they're understanding what's being said. Some doctors use professional terms, and they might as well be talking to the wall because as a client, I'm not understanding what's being said. So you need to make darn sure you understand what they're talking about. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. You are so right in the kind of, because every dog has little peculiarities now. You hope, though, that they're going to adhere to what you're telling them. Yeah, I know. Well, then the other thing is, um, I think that the doctor should explain the, the pre-anesthetics, the diagnostic uh, that's going to go take force. You know, we're going to use blood. And, explain, and what, what about the pain control? And how long is it going to be in the hospital? What kind of nursing care, uh, care standards? Um, and that if, if they're not covered, you should ask about those things. It's important. You know, this is your pet. And uh, so, so you need to know those things. Make sure the doctor explains the surgery so that you understand what's going to occur. And, and feel free to ask questions. Don't just stand there and your teeth in your mouth. If there's something you don't understand, ask about it, you know. Uh, what about follow-up exams? What kind of medication am I going to have to give? Uh, what kind of a, a effects will the surgery have on my pet? Is it going to be... Knocked out for the next four or five days, it's going to be bouncing around. You know, no, all that, you need to know that kind of thing. Then you should discuss all uh, foreseeable charges should be explained. You know, uh, should, um, are there going to be additional charges and, and what charges are making you feel comfortable? Get it in writing if you feel like you need to. And, <clears throat> for example, if I can't get here and I leave my pet here an extra day, I might be charged an extra day of boarding. And for some people, if you don't tell them that, they're very upset because you didn't tell me I was going to pay $40 for keeping the dog over. I'd have come and picked it up. Well, you know, you need to know those kinds of things. And if they tell you that if you leave it here, you're going to pay 40 bucks, you know, you need to, to know that. Um, so you need to know the pre-surgical procedures to follow to get your pet ready for surgery. What do I need to do at home? Do I need to – don't feed it, for example. Um, and uh, whatever else the doctor says, don't do these things. Ask about the shaving of hair and uh, where's the hair uh, – if they're going to cut hair, where's the hair going to be shaved and what's the chances of hair not growing back? Because, you know, some pets, it can take up to six months for the hair to grow back. And um, you need to know about the pre-surgery workup, you know, the, the blood – work and all that. Uh, what is it going to be? Are you going to test for heartworms? Uh, you know, get an understanding of what's going to happen. And how long will it be in the hospital if, if for their surgery? Because, you know, some of them are in for surgery today and they're out this, this afternoon. And others are in there for two or three days. And uh, uh, so you need to know that. Tell the doctor or person collecting information how you want to be contacted and leave a proper phone number. It's amazing the number of people who leave a phone number and you call and they're not there. Mm. Or it's somebody else's phone number <laughs> and you can't talk to them because they don't even know what's going on. So it's very important. Then uh, determine the, uh, what the discharge date's going to be. When am I going to pick up this pet? And uh, uh, that kind of thing. If there's a discharge appointment, what, 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 how many days before the follow-up to bring the, the pet back? And if there's medication to be dispensed, what are they, and how often am I going to have to give it? And it is going to be orally, and then, gosh, am I going to have trouble getting it down the, the cats or dogs? <laughs> and so those are points, I think, that should be discussed when they, they take their pet in for surgery. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love it. I, in fact, I'm strange. I hate for my dog to be there a moment more than it has to be. You know, as soon as I can pick it up, I'm there. Or I, I actually even hate to leave 
the veterinarian's office. And I am a crazy person, you know that, Dr. Bridgeway, but I love that dog like I love a child, and I wouldn't leave my child for, you know, days or even hours. So I would like to wait in the waiting room as soon as the dog's available. I want to take it home. <laughs> I understand that. You know, <laughs> the thing is, uh, pets are, are kind of a a member of the family. Right. And, and actually, some times when we lose a pet, the loss can be as wor- as bad or worse than if you lost a, a family member. I mean, that sounds stupid, and but that's true. That's how I feel. I had, I was uh, cleaning out my closet the other day, and I saw our dog was named Snowy. I saw a couple of pictures, and oh my gosh, I just went, oh, my poor baby. I mean, it's it's true. It affected me big time. In fact, it's been, I don't know, three years or a while now, and I haven't gotten another dog uh, for many reasons, but I think now I'm about to do that. I'm getting, I think, a little desperate. <laughs> Okay. But I want the right dog. That's the thing, because I, you know, I, I will not give the dog up, and I don't want to be stuck with something that is makes everyone unhappy. So I have to be very careful, and so I have to go through that process. And I know it'll, it's going to be fine. As soon as I find that lovely dog, I'll be very happy. Yeah, there you go. Well, uh, so we're about to uh, say goodbye. We really appreciated you getting on this morning. I hope that the weather isn't too bad up there. It's raining down here. No, no, I don't think here. so. I, I... I walked out and got the newspaper this morning, and it wasn't raining anyway. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, we thank you so much for what you do and for writing for us and being on our radio show, R-I-D-G-W-A-Y. Uh, you will enjoy that book. It's like a little Bible. It's a very important book. Get it, and you'll have it, and you'll feel a lot better to answer all the questions usually that um, you need right away. Thank you so much again. You bet. Anytime. All right. Bye, Dr. Ridgeway.